in this episode i would like to discuss about the application of the indian contract act upon the indian partnership act because we know that partnership is such a relation which is created only by virtue of an agreement or contract entered upon between the partners of a partnership firm so as such it is very natural that provisions of the indian contract act are relevant to this aspect so today's topic of discussion is that how much indian contract act 1872 can be applied while interpreting the provisions of the indian partnership act 1932 A partnership starts with one agreement, which is entered into between the various partners. So every conditions or stipulations, as the case may be, which are written there, and every partners are supposed to follow those provisions or stipulations prescribed in the agreement. So it is a contract. So since it is an agreement which is made between the par- partners for commencement of the business, so certainly. the provisions of the indian contract act are very much relevant so section 2 clause e of the indian partnership act 1932 it says that the expressions which are used in the partnership act but which are not defined there to but which are defined in the indian contract act will have the same meaning that means the expressions which are used in the indian partnership act but which are undefined but which are defined in the indian contract act it will have the same meaning assigned to them by the indian contract act so some example i would like to cite first is that section 5 of the indian partnership act if we invoke section 5 of the indian partnership act it will transfer to us that what it is stated there that partnership is determined by the contract and not by the status so the very particular term the word is contract which is used in section 5 of the indian partnership act but which is undefined there too but the contract is defined in the section 2 clause h of the indian contract act so the meaning which is given to the word or term contract assigned by the indian contract act will be applied during the interpretation of the provisions of the section 5 of the partnership act that means it will have the same meaning similarly section 10 of the indian partnership act which says that every partner will indemnify the partnership firm for any loss sustained to the partnership firm because of the fraud on the part of the partner so it says section 10 of the partnership act says that partner is bound to indemnify the firm for any loss cost because of his fraud so the very particular words indemnity and the word fraud is not defined in the partnership act but both words are defined precisely under the indian contract act by virtue of section 124 of the indian contract act where the term indemnity is defined that if any person promises to save the other from the loss caused to him by the conduct of the promisor himself or by conduct of any other person is called the contract of indemnity so the same meaning will be applied over here and similarly the term fraud is undefined in the partnership act but which is defined by virtue of section 17 of the indian contract act that means if any person has acted means Uh, in uh, to deceive any person or he has acted to means take some advantage by putting any person uh, b- b- by way of any concealment so that means suggest you a falsity that means the false suggestion or suppress you very that means the suppression of the material fact so or any other act which is fitted to deceive as defined in the uh, section 17 of the indian contract act will have the same meaning while interpreting the provisions of section 10 and similarly section 18 of the indian partnership act states that the partner each partner will be considered as an agent of the firm so the term agent is used in section 18 of the partnership act but which is not defined there to in partnership act nowhere the term agent is defined but which is defined in the indian part 
Indian Contract Act that is by virtue of section 182 of the Indian Contract Act it is stated that agent means the person who is employed by another to act on behalf of him and to represent that person before any third person. So, what is the agent that means who is employed by a person and actually he is acting on behalf of that person who has actually appointed and who, rep who is representing that person before any dealing with the third person. So, the person is known as agent who is appointed and the appointing authority that means whom he is representing is known as the principal. So, this words means which are assigned by the Indian contract act will have the same meaning during the interpretation of the provisions of the partnership act. Now, let us have a look that what is the chart means over here that section 2 e that is stated that expressions used in the partnership act 1932, but not defined there, but defined under the Indian contract act 1872 shall have the same meaning as I have already discussed. Now, I will show here what I have already stated that the related sections of the partnership act and uh, the Indian contract act. So, what I have already discussed the application of the Indian contract act upon the Indian partnership act that is known as doctrine of incorporation by reference. So, that means, the expressions which are used in the partnership act, but undefined, but defined under the Indian contract act, we are taking the Indian contract act provisions which are defined there to as way of reference and thereby we are interpreting the provisions of the Indian Partnership Act. So, that is why it is denoted as doctrine of incorporation by reference. So, let us have a look that a comparative table I have shown here that section 5 of the in, means Indian Partnership Act where the word is used therein that is contract, but the contract is undefined there, but it is defined in the Indian Contract Act section 2 H it defines the term contract. Similarly, section 10 of the Indian Partnership Act where this term indemnity and fraud is used, but undefined, but which is defined by virtue of Indian Contract Act that is section 124 defines the term indemnity and section 17 defines the term fraud. Similarly, section 18 of the Partnership Act where the word agent is used, but which is not defined but which is defined in section 182 of the Indian Contract Act. So, that is why it is stated the doctrine of incorporation by reference since the we are taking the help of Indian Contract Act while interpreting uh, the provisions of the Partnership Act and moreover it is supported by Indian Partnership Act as well because by virtue of section 2 clause E of the Partnership Act itself. Now, I would like to discuss about two more sections of the Indian Partnership Act which are very much relevant with this context that is section 3 and section 74 clause f. Now, in pursuance of section 3 of the Indian Partnership Act which states that the Indian Contract Act which is unrepealed that means, the unrepealed provisions of the Indian Contract Act will be applied during the interpretation of the provisions of the Indian Partnership Act. So, much so that it is not inconsistent with the express provisions of the Indian Partnership Act. So, that means, the unrepealed provisions of the Indian Contract Act will be considered or can be taken into while interpreting the provisions of the Indian Partnership Act, if those provisions are not inconsistent. So, that means, the word is stated in this section 3 that save it is not inconsistent with the provisions of the partnership act. That means, Indian contract act will be applied provisions of the Indian contract act will be applied save those are not inconsistent with the express provisions of the partnership act. And another section is that is section 74 and clause f of the partnership act which says that this act that means the partnership act or any repeal of this act will not affect any rule of law unless those are inconsistent with the provisions of the partnership act so any rule of law 
including the Indian Contract Act will not be affected by the interpretation of the Partnership Act if they are not inconsistent with the provisions of the Partnership Act. So, have a look that as I have stated that uh, section 3 of the Partnership Act states that application of the provisions of the Indian Contract Act 1872 that the unrebuilt provisions save inconsistent with express provisions of the Partnership Act will apply. And another is section 74 clause F as I have stated that is savings clause that this act or its repeal will not affect any rule of law not inconsistent with this act. So, these provisions of saving also supporting the provisions of the Indian Contract Act. Now, I would like to discuss few cases which are relevant with this aspect. Now, I am discussing about the two essential words which are used in the section 3 itself. The first is the express provision and second is inconsistent. Now, I am dealing with the first one that is the express provision and in this aspect I would like to discuss one prominent judgment of our apex court that is Supreme Court of India that is the Needle Industries India Limited versus Needle Industries New India Holding Limited. So, in this case it was decided by our Supreme Court that the term what is used in section 3 of the Indian Partnership Act that is the express provision. Now, court says that express provision means what? Express provision does not always necessarily mean that there is the specific, specific mention that is it is specifically mentioned by any act or anywhere. It is sufficient if the language is covered. So, express provision what is stated by our apex court in this judgment that express provision does not necessarily mean that it is mentioned directly in the language. It is sufficient that if it is used in the language specific mention is not necessary and that means it is applied in reference to the context and nothing inference can be drawn. So, whether it is applied the language is applied or not that is the substantial question it is not depending that how much it is inferred. So, as I have already stated that Needle Industries India Limited versus Needle Industries New India Holding Limited AIR 1981 Supreme Court 1298, it was the term express provision which was explained by our apex court in this manner. Now, I would, now I would like to discuss about the second word that is the inconsistent with reference to another judgment. Now, I would like to discuss about the next decision of the Supreme Court that is the Bosti Sugar Mills Limited versus the state of UP. In this judgment, Supreme Court decided the particular term that is the inconsistent. So, inconsistent as stated by our apex code is such that inconsistent means which is lacking the consistency and which is not compatible with the subject matter. So, two provisions of the a particular statute are said to be inconsistent when they are related with the common subject matter and they are actually overlapping with each other and they are coextensive in nature and at the same time simultaneously they are actually overlapping or they are actually repugnant and contrary in nature against each other. So, if they are overlapping with each other and they are coextensive in such a situation that one is appearing as repugnant and contrary to the other and the situation is such that one will perish if the another will prevail. So, that means one will prevail if only the other is being perished. In that circumstances only we can say that this is the inconsistency. So, let us have a look at the in this decision that Bosti Sugar Mills Company Limited versus State of UP. AIR 1979 Supreme Court, it was decided the particular term inconsistent. So, finally, it can be concluded that Indian Partnership Act and the Indian Contract Act are related and the provisions of the Indian Contract Act can be taken into consideration while interpreting the provisions of the Indian Partnership Act and that is prescribed in various provisions as I have already discussed that is particularly section 2, section 3 of the Partnership Act.